Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. I have an issue to solve, and I'm going to solve it with Smarter Circuits. I need to be able to control these 12 circuits from that junction box using only the four wires that are connecting the two boxes. New wires cannot be added between the boxes, but an additional 120 volt hot and a neutral are available for dedicated power devices. The wires between the boxes are too light gauge to handle the current of these heavier circuits, and there aren't enough of them anyway, so we'll be using some relays, possibly my favorite clicky objects. Since there's only four wires, some logic seems in order, and I have just the thing. These Raspberry Pi Pico microcontrollers will do nicely. I will use this rather hefty 5 volt power supply because I have it, and I'll be wiring a lot of other things through other wires. I've got some buttons here and some small LCD screens for displaying simple information. There are two reasons I'm not doing this build in the place it will be installed. One, it's always better if you can build somewhere that's easier to work and then install what you've built. And two, I want this arrangement to be useful for more than just its initial use case. I find myself needing similar reliable wired remote functionality in a lot of projects, and I think it's a good bit of inspiration for other designs my viewers might be mulling over. To put it simply, this build is not only to solve this problem, but perhaps illustrate an approach that might not have been obvious before. I'm going to need two of these wires to serve as the power distribution from the circuit box to the control box or boxes for the microcontrollers, so that leaves me with two wires to serve my communications needs. There are many ways to go about this, but for my purposes, I've decided to use UART, a serial technology for asynchronous communications that was developed in the 1960s by a man named Gordon Bell. It has been improved a bit since then, but the overall functionality has remained the same because it's a simple, effective, and reliable method. I'll save the historical and under-the-hood analysis of UART for another video. For this build, I'll just focus on the things that are important to make this build work. The two pins we're wiring to on the microcontroller are for transmit and receive. This means we'll cross them so that the transmit on one goes to the receive on the other. You may now be wondering how you can have more than two devices, and the answer is that you must accept that one device needs to be responsible for relaying communication and deciding when devices can speak. Later, I will set up some code to make all of the communication logic work, but first I need to wire everything up. The Pico comes without headers soldered on, as do the LCD screens. The buttons also need jumper wires attached. I'm skipping through a lot of the prep work on this build because I'm not sure if anyone is interested in seeing all of the boring stuff, or more of the boring stuff. But if you are, let me know in the comments and I'll post separate videos of the tedium for future builds. For screens and buttons, all three of these devices will be wired the same, so I'll just do one of the control boards. The pins are the same for the central system as well. The pins used for the relays aren't used on the control boards. I'll need to use this wire to allow me to tap off of the 5 volt power to the microcontroller for the LCD screen. It is important that the entire system share a ground not only for convenience, but for the UART communication to work properly. I'll run the clock pin from the LCD to GPIO pin 9 and the data pin from the LCD to GPIO pin 8. That's all you need for the LCD to work physically. You'll add the MicroPython SSD1306 library to control the LCD logically later. Now, I just need to connect my 3.3 volt from the microcontroller to the buttons. I'll run the red button to GPIO pin 16, the green button to GPIO pin 17, the blue button to GPIO pin 18, and the black button, which isn't present on the central board, to GPIO pin 19. Now, we have a way to collect input and display information. The last piece is communication. UART pins for the control boards will be opposite the central board. That means that all control boards will have their transmit pin wired to the receive pin of the central board. In other words, the only time you should have the wires flipped is on the central board. Here I'll use yellow for transmit from the central board and orange for receive, for no particular reason. The yellow wire connects to the transmit pin on the central board and the receive on our control boards. The orange wire connects to the receive pin on the central board and then to the transmit pins of our control boards. Now I'll connect the relays to our central board. Now I can simply run the 3.3 volt output pins from the microcontroller to the IN1 and IN2 pins of each relay module. I'll use GPIO pins 2 through 13 and also GPIO pins 26 and 27 to get my last two circuits. 
The relay module requires a 5 volt power supply to the switching circuitry behind the opto isolator circuit on these modules. For those who are more technical than that, you can actually bridge the LED and use 3.3 volts because the LED is the only thing making the 5 volt necessary technically, but I don't like under voltage on the relay coil, even if it is rated to turn on at the lower voltage. I'll simply run a jumper wire from the 5 volt supply to all of the VCC pins on all of my relay modules. Using the same power supply for both the switching circuits on the relay boards and the microcontrollers makes sharing the ground even easier. I don't need to run a ground from the microcontroller to the relays because it is shared anyway. So I'll run another jumper like I did with the hot straight from the power supply to the relay modules. That's it. All the physical work is done. Now I just need to write some code to handle communication and switching. I'm not going to show all of that. Again, if you want to see me doing that stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do for future builds. I will make the code for this build available on the GitHub repo linked in the description. As you can see, I can use the black button to set a device ID on the control boards. This tells the central boards which three relays this module controls. There are a lot of ways of doing this, but I kept it fairly simple here. You can create all kinds of logic and control using these components, but there's more. In the next build video, I'm going to add this current metering device and this IR brake beam sensor to one of the control boards to experiment with different uses. You'd be surprised what your system can know with some clever sensor placement. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter at Circuits Smarter or on Facebook. And if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building Smarter Circuits.